I laid down, staring at the ceiling. It had a mocking face that really irritated me. On it you could clearly read all the Christmas stories of my family, the fading layers of paint trying to hide the ugly face of each other, the rusted nails carrying various colors of ribbons from the past years or even more. My name is Chris and here is my story. Before we continue with the story, do not forget to click on the notification button in order to get notified at every new video posted. May God bless you. I then roll my eyes to the most cherished thing my mother had in the house. It was a frame with the following words. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 2. My mother held on to this scripture so much that, despite the raging poverty that was constantly hitting us in the face, she still had hope for a bright future. I am now 14 years old and will leave high school this year. A man, the only in my mother's life. How do I make her happy? How do I give her the best days on this earth? I kept on talking to myself and memories of my past happy days flushed through my mind. My mom used to be the most beautiful person you could ever set your eyes upon. Life had not been fair to her at all, but she never gave up. She came from a polygamous home. Her parents were poisoned by her uncle because of succession issues. She grew up alone as a fighter, always working hard to get any piece of bread that touched her lips. The man she later fell in love with, sacrificed for, left her while she was pregnant for a more educated lady. She struggled with my pregnancy, tilled the soil, worked for people, and finally set up her little business. It was this business that sustained us until she started suffering from rheumatism, which slowed down her physical abilities. Instead of getting herself treated, she instead made sure I got all I needed for my end-of-year exams, and she used some herbs to massage her legs that were constantly hurting. In all this, when I always tried to help her out, she would refuse, asking me to focus on my studies. All of the sad events in her life never for once twisted her trust in God. I really used to wonder what type of woman she was. When I was 12 years old, my father showed up and told my mother he wanted to take me with him and give me a better life. My mother calmly rejected the offer, though I was somehow offended. She said she had bad feelings about my father's lifestyle and wealth, so it's better to stay away from him. You are my eyes and I must take care of you with my own life. I will not allow anything to happen to you. With time, I pray the Lord helps you to see the truth one day, she said with a smile. That week I didn't close my eyes each time I went to bed. The new year was just a few days away. People were going to be celebrating and I couldn't even invite my friends home. We had little to eat and where would they even sit? It then occurred to me that my father left his business card. I searched in the cupboard all night and found it. I had the address of his hotel in the city. It was just 300 kilometers away from where I lived. What if I went there and worked for a while, gathered some money, then came back and took my mom to a good hospital for her treatment? I wondered loud. The next day, I woke up early than usual prayed and did what I had to do around the house. I made something for her to eat when she wakes before taking her medication. I got to her shop and cleaned then locked up the place. I returned to the house, checked on her and she was still deep asleep. I knelt before her bed, took her hand softly in mine. I placed her hand on my forehead to get her blessings as tears rolled down my cheeks. I stood up slowly and left the house. I stood in front of the sad structure that served as our house and stared for a while, then left. On getting to the road, it seemed almost abandoned. The red dust filled the air and almost made it impossible to see a car approaching. After walking for a while, a bus came my way and told the driver that I was heading to the capital city. He nodded and said it would cost me 5,000 francs. I was not really surprised because my friends who used to go for vacations in the capital told me about that. 
I got onto the bus and took a seat by the window. As we drove off, my heart began to beat faster and I could hear my inner man screaming, I want to drop. Unfortunately, it was just in my mind. I had to brave the world so as to get to my mom a dream life. As I was counting the cattle and cows on the farm along the road, I fell asleep. I was awakened by a loud car honk and a loud noise from the street. I opened my eyes and it was already night. I asked the driver and he said we had arrived the park in the capital city. I got off the bus and tried asking around for the closest bakery. I went there and met one of the ladies at the reception. I asked for Mr. Fred and she told me to wait for a while. She rang his room number. After a while, a tall dark man walked towards me with some men walking by his side. Hello Chris, he said as he stretched his hand out to greet me. Good evening sir, I replied in an almost trembling voice and sweaty hands. <laughs> I don't eat people and moreover you are a man. Men don't sweat except when they are looking for money. And since that is why you're here, I think we will get along well. He spoke as he started moving towards the door and I followed. We got to the parking and the cars I saw made me reflect again on the kind of life I wanted for my mother and I. We got in and drove off. The road led us out of the noisy town and I was beginning to get scared. After driving for close to an hour, we got to a big gate and when we entered, there was a great calm and we drove for another five minutes through the very tall trees till we got to a big mansion. We got into the mansion and some maids welcomed us. They showed me my room. It was so big that I thought it was for three people. He told me to take my bath and meet him in the dining section. The water felt so good and I almost fell asleep while taking my bath. For once I wasn't taking my bath in a hurry to finish so that people passing wouldn't see me. I followed the maid into another room. It was the dining room. I had never seen so much food in my life. It was literally a banquet. I lost my appetite immediately. I saw all the food. After eating, it was already 9 p.m. So I sat waiting for him to come out and talk about the job I came to do. After waiting for close to 30 minutes, one of his guards came and told me to go to bed, that they would come get me when it's time. I got somehow worried, but I was too tired to say no to rest. I went to the room and sat up to pray. Lord, I thank you for how far I've come. I thank you because according to Isaiah chapter 12 verses 2, I had nothing to fear. Come and take total control of me, how you've been doing all my life. Give my mother peace this night. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Immediately, I slept off. In the middle of the night, I heard a tap at the door and someone moved in. It was one of the guards. He asked me to follow him. I followed him through a long corridor with scary carvings on the wall and animals' heads that seemed to be alive. When we got to the end of the corridor, there was a black door and he asked me to open it and enter. Immediately, I entered. The door behind me was shut. The call in the room was so unusual. It was a rectangular-shaped room with a long slab in the middle just like those in the modern kitchens. I saw Mr. Fred standing at the end of the room. Come forward, he said in a cold voice. I moved towards him and pulled a long black curtain at the end of the room. What I saw made me sweat from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. The only thing you have to do is wash them and dress them up with the clothes on the slab then someone else would do the rest for each corpse you wash you get 50,000 francs so for all what you have here you have 600,000 francs what do you think can can i go and think about it i answered in a trembling voice yes you can think about it but just here look here my son in this life you either win or lose your mother chose to lose, reason why you have never eaten a gold meal in your life. This opportunity I am giving you is a golden one. From this level, I will get you upgraded and before you know, you will be partners with me. Think about it, but know the work must be done before 5 a.m. And you can't leave this room unless it's done. He spoke and left the room. I ran to the door, but it was locked from outside. 
I looked around the room, but there was just a window, which was high above the slab. I climbed on it and tried looking for a way out and noticed we were at the last floor. I stood there for a while and tried to pray, but my tongue was too heavy and my teeth kept grinding. Dear God, please show up, if not for me, but for my mother's sake. Amen. I struggled to open the window glass and squeeze myself out. The glass caught my arm, but the pain was bearable compared to what I just saw. I hung there, not knowing where to step my feet, and I kept struggling. I slipped and fell. In my mind, I was already dead, but I later woke up in the middle of a farm by the road. The fact that it was midnight didn't scare me anymore. I ran through the farm for fear of being caught. Finally, I saw the light of a bus, and it looked like the one I boarded on when coming. The driver stopped and he recognized me. He said I'm lucky because it's the last journey of the day. I sat on that bus thinking on how I will tell my mother everything but again I remember that God just saved my life when I had almost lost it. Reason why I call him the God of the Zero Hour.